Well, as a, a newer format of video, I'm going to do this one in a, a couple of stages. So, um, but I'll do it in installments because it's an upgrade <coughs> kind of thing, and it's a refret and a setup. And this is a Rally GL 300. Um, David has taken the shine to Rally, so we've got them. He's got them coming out of his ears at the moment. And this one is a bog standard black rally jill 300 and actually nothing wrong with it it's grubby strings are filthy um, and the frets are a bit worn out well they're, they're fairly low um, so we're going to refret this one and um, give it a kind of new lease of life because it's a rally is just absolutely fantastic uh, we're going to keep the original pickups at this point in time um, because they're good enough and the, you know i by that I mean they're extremely good for OEM, is that what they call it? Original pickups. I never had any complaints about rally pickups. So they're a bit on the grubby side, a bit low, they're barely um, a millimeter, some of those tall, but that's fine. We're gonna refresh them. I'll do some more measurements just to make make absolutely sure. Is that there is a mark on this fret here where it's got a sort of bang, something's hit down on it, and if I don't clean that up, because we can refresh the board as well. So, yeah. Nice looking. And actually, we could probably get this shining really well. Oh, there is this another slight problem. The switch is bent here, so we'll need to get replace that. But apart from that, everything else looks and feels pretty good. And these, these rally Les Pauls are great things. I mean, they're Great solid chunky Les Pauls, the real deal, oh, you know, the real Chinese deal, but they are an exceptionally good quality Les Paul style guitar. And I came across these a few years ago and was just blown away by them. And they don't really sell them new anywhere obvious here. It's not like they're imported here. They're, um, I think it's a Korean company making them in China. So. Uh, but it's, it's, they seem to get here somehow. A couple of people in eBay seem to have nearly new ones, and then there are a few sort of around the world, uh, well, you know, around the UK, uh, that you can pick up. And so David's been looking at these um, and just grabbing them all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by uh, taking off everything because we're just going to get straight into... Um, basically refreshing this and I'll, I'll sort of double check and make sure but it's 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 the you know I think this this one David wants to be in a, a new lease of life in terms of the frets and they are a bit worn out at present so we're going to go with that these rallies amazingly seem to come with very very straight plain necks and um, very little in the way of kinks and weirdness, um, which may be what, set, what really s sets it apart from a lot of uh, Chinese guitars that I've seen. Um, it, the neck really does feel something unusually good in these. Um, so we're going to change the bridge as well. Uh, that's I'm waiting for those and the knobs. So we're waiting for bridge and knobs in from Northwest Guitars. So the knobs are going to be black. Bridge is going to be a roller and we'll do the adjustable nut as well. Um, so really I'm going to be sort of hurrying, not hurrying along. It's a late start here today. I've had parish council stuff going on um, just now, uh, which I've not got in my diary. So I, was, I had planned to work this evening and scheduled other things in the day. So I ran into having to do the parish council type work tonight. Um, that, there's an interesting sign. So somebody's left the original uh, cellophane on the, the um, truss rod cover. So it all looks pretty good. Now rallies, ha, huh, rallies, they set their nuts in a bit, could be a bit dodgy. So I don't want to assume this one's going to just come out easily. I think it could do. I know vintage runs the risk of 
uh, the nut often the vintage finish seem to finish their guitars with the nut glued in by the by the finish so I'm going to hope this one uh, comes free without any major problems so that's loosened it up I'm gonna give it another tap the other way and see if it's given it any freedom of movement okay so this is where we, we run the risk. We're going to take this out, and I think rather than run any risk to the finish, I'm going to remove that with a uh, with a thing, a cutting disc. Is what I mean. So let's just try and get this untangled from it. Excuse me. Wires. So today's uh, task, if I can achieve it, is I'm going to cut out this nut. I'm going to um, we're going to assess the frets and come to a conclusion on their future, and then probably remove the existing frets, um, re-radius the board a little bit to get rid of the marks and to clean it up. Um, and then go into preparing the frets and cutting a series of frets. Um, and if we can, uh, it'd be nice to tap them in, but that may not be doable on the time I've got. So here we go with the cutting out of the nut. This is going to be cutting in plastic, so it'll be noisy. I'm going to put on the mask when I do this because it is a bit on the dusty side. Um, you can do without breathing it in. Uh, I would try that for a second. Okay, let's do it. Previous owner. Uh, huh, hard to tell exactly. Okay, let's get down to the bottom if we can. Nice. Well, it's plastic, but uh, kicked up a lot of dust in the cutting. Cool. Okay, let's just. Oh, 
Okay, okay. Bit of dust on there now. Okay, so the nut is out cleanly. That's good. All is good. Now I'm going to take off the tuners because I want to, when it comes to it, I want to give all of this a complete clean down. So tuners can come off as well. We'll keep them off to one side. We'll get everything off possible to give us the best chance to clean up. Now, I'm not 100% convinced about these color tone polishes that I've got from, well, actually, Stumac recommended ones, or the, are they Stumac branded? Yeah, Stumac branded. I thought I'd try them. They were on sale in the UK rather than send away for them, but I'm not, I like some of the other ones I've had before. I've been much more convincing as uh, scratch remover creams, but I could be wrong. Maybe I'm looking for something they ain't gonna give me. So these tuners on these uh, rally guitars, you can see some grunge there that will come off nicely later on. These tuners are Jinho tuners. Oh no, these are not. So these are, okay. These may already be upgrades then. Uh, they're unbranded. Usually the, the tuners are, are these Jin? Oh, these are Jinho. They just don't have the name on them. Okay. Uh, they got the name on the underside, so they are uh, they are the standard ones, but they're pretty good quality. Again, little details like that that make these stand these a little bit apart from some of the other Les Pauls. And it's very difficult to say why these have turned out so good. But David, for example, as a convert to them, would would know exactly what I mean now. Um, I think I just when I originally described them to him. I would say that the first one I ever had was nearly perfectly playable right from the outset. And it wasn't new, it, it had come like that. Somebody else had owned it and then I ended up buying it second hand. But the, um, it, was, it was quite obvious that there was something, to me it seemed there was something quite special about it. Um, as I say, almost, almost perfect as it came to me, um, and um, you know, I did the standard sort of setup work on it, but once I'd done that, it was extraordinarily good. And every, pretty much every single one of these GL300 Les Paul style models um, has proved to be the same. It's not, it's not like it's just a one-off. It's they all set up brilliantly in my experience, which is, which is a great thing to, to know because you can confidently recommend them to somebody else and then somebody else will go and buy them and, and be absolutely thrilled and, and in the case of David he's so thrilled that he ended up buying five and well, four of these in a row and a jazz one as well so I'm going to feel of these perhaps there's some wear there let's see if I can get a, an average measurement um, the thing about this is I'm quite prepared to refret it, um, but it depends. See, we're, even with jumbo frets, we're looking at, see, these are coming in, measuring in at under 90.9. So they're not very high um, by any means, but it's difficult to make measurements with this kind of, what do you call it? this thing, the digital caliper. Um, so I'm just, I'm just trying to get a feel. Yeah, these, I mean, they're, they're, they are quite low. We'll go and do what we were asked to do. I will refret them. So to refret, I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna put the neck into a bit of back bow which means, I see where it is now, it's, it's beautifully flat. I'm going to tighten it up and watch. First of all, put it into back bow, which it's definitely done there. So first thing is, is that tells me that the neck 
the truss rod is working, which is really important. Um, so that's a great start. Uh, the second thing is it in putting it into some back bow, it, um, I suppose you could say it, it just very slightly reduces the grip of the wood onto the fret tangs. That's the idea. So when I come to remove these frets, this should come out a tiny bit easier. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bit of water and I'm going to sort of liberally throw some water onto this neck just for the time being. Now the idea is, is to soften up the wood a little bit to help the release of the frets because what we would prefer is that these frets come out without um, pulling shreds, shards of, uh, of um, wood with them. So we don't want them splintering. Right. Now I'm going to turn on the soldering iron and I'm going to use the soldering iron to heat the frets. Um, I'm just going to sort of keep spreading that water around. So we're going to get it reasonably um, damp. I'll uh, take some of the standing water off. Keep it fairly damp. I'm going to heat up the soldering iron and I'm going to, where am I going to bring it to? I'm going to why is it tangled? Bring it this way. A bit more. Over there. And over here. Something like that. Can we see where we are? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my removing the frets. Now, I have a technique that I prefer to do, is I use the heat to warm the fret up. But what I like to do is, once I've done that, you can see it will steam a little bit. Once I've um, warmed the fret a little bit at this end, then I try to raise the fret using a blade technique that I've um, been practicing over the longest while. Uh, and that isn't going to work. Now it could be that these are stuck in very firmly and I might need to use several blades to get this going. But the idea is uh, I can use a blade to... Burp, burp. I can use a blade to try... Bring a few of these. Try and um, start the lift. So I'm just trying to get underneath the tang a little bit. Wow, that is very tightly fitted. Good Lord. Oh, that is very, very, that is rock solid. Not often that I come across frets that are that tightly installed. I can hear the um, soldering on making its little heating element noises. So, as you can see, very often frets wow, will, will lift up easily. And these are coming up. But my goodness, that's, that's, that's actually giving me quite a fight. So having, having got the, um, having got the end up using the uh, blade I'm able then to carry on with the these pliers and heating as I go along um, and just gently nipping my way along to bring the fret out. Now the reason I use the blade to get the fret started is because if I don't um, it actually uh, it's actually condent the edge of the fingerboard quite a lot when you're trying to get the um, get the end up. There's quite a lot of wear down here now. So a little bit of heat. We've got the back bow of the neck, which we hope is helping to loosen off the grip. Um, and we, blimey, it really is. 
quite tough. This is something else. I'll break a few of these before I get anywhere. So you can probably see that the blade has gone underneath. And I'm trying to twist. I find that sort of twisting action is quite useful to get it started. But this is really firmly in place. So still, I've got it up enough to get the first bite on without having to crimp the end, which I'm really loath to do. But these are very, very well fitted frets. There's no doubt about that. But they're also releasing the, the frets very well too. So I'm getting there, but it's it's harder at the start of the fret than I expected. I've had some guitars you can you can just hoik out the uh, the fret really easily using this hand hand technique. Um, there you are. That's a start. That's how it usually goes. So I kind of ride the soldering iron between the jaws of the pulling pliers as I go along and that keeps the fret warm. Um, do I think that the heat does much to the glue if there is glue in there? I don't know. I'm not actually convinced there's glue in there. This could be done purely on tight fit. Um, could possibly just be that. But anyway, um, either which way, it maybe it goes some way to softening the wood a little bit, maybe, um, or maybe heats the, the moisture uh, that I've already put on here and creates a little bit of steam to help things on their way. There you go. It's starting to work more easily now. Either which way, it's worth trying. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think it's really about softening the glue. Maybe the heat itself isn't even about soften, softening the glue. Maybe really what it's just about is helping to soften the wood a little bit more than anything else, just by having it slightly warmed up. So these are coming out very well with absolutely no significant um, uh, tear out or anything, which is nice. So a bit of heat. Start going. A lot of it's to do with getting that blade right in the right place there to begin with. Once you get it underneath, you get the perfect start and you're on your way. So like I said, that prevents me denting the end of the fingerboard, which is quite common when you're gripping with these types of pliers to get a start point to get purchase. Um, now the thing about refretting a Les Paul style guitar like this, as you can see, there's a binding on the uh, down the neck. And unless you want to take the binding off, you've got to obviously then refret with the binding on. And that means uh, you have to think about putting the frets inside the binding so as not to damage the binding. So that's okay because we can cut um, little overhangs in the frets that we're I'm going to prepare for this, um, but the tricky part, if anything, is cleaning the fret slots out um, when you can't go straight through at either end. So if you if you think about, imagine a guitar neck without um, binding. Um, basically, to put some new frets on, what you just really need, you need to obviously remove the old frets. But to clean the slots and prepare them, you could just run a good quality fret saw through there um, and that will clean out, cut into and clean out the, the fret slot and make sure it's absolutely free of detritus and stuff. Um, obviously, you can see with the binding stopping over each end, we can't do that. So um, the cleaning part of the slot has to be done with blades and tools like that. And sometimes if any bits of detritus get stuck in the slot, no matter how careful you can be, sometimes it, it then means that the, thank you, it sometimes means that the, um, the new fret won't sit 100% flat. Uh, I don't know how 
in this case I think this looks looks like it would clean out pretty well um, partly because there's not a not a lot of old glue remains now what I can do by the way is when I'm confident that I'm getting these lifts going quite well at the beginning is I can just run down now sorry about the blurs I can just run down now and concentrate on getting these lifts started get a few done in a row like that and then I can go and pull them out sort of production line um, there's a few little marks on the fret uh, on the wood of the fingerboard which we can clean up with a little bit of re-radiusing obviously this is a 12 inch radius guitar so we can lightly radius this um, radiusing is one of the things that uh, is really there's a lot of possibility for variation and error when it comes to radiusing. So if you think of the things you play at, that are at play, you've got a fretboard, which is, has been mechanically radiused using one machine. You've got a fret winding, bending, sorry, fret bender, um, which somebody has used to bend the frets to the given radius but they will be measuring that fret wire against a, an object with a radius gauge on it so although i've got a let's say we've got a 12 inch radius um 12 inch radius fingerboard um it may it's often possible sometimes quite likely that the actual frets you've got on the guitar are not quite the same uh, 12 inch radius as the fingerboard because the bender as it were um, has bent them to a slightly different radius um, because the guide that they're using to compare it with may be just very slightly out then when you come to put the frets in sometimes you may find that the brass insert that you might use to tap them in or press them in you might actually find that that's uh, a different radius very slightly all over again and may push the frets in to its radius over whatever the radius of the board is. Um, so there are, there are at least those ways to get it wrong <laughs> or to have variations creep in. And on top of that all, um, then you may come to do a fret levelling using a radius block uh, if you do you want to do that and you may find that the radius block you've got made out of wood by some luthier supplies type of place may actually not be quite the same radius as the 12 inch machinery was used on making uh, that they used to make the the curve on the fingerboard so there's every time there is a curve in the system there's a chance that the reference point for the radius involved can be different so all of this has to be sort of kept in mind when you're refretting. And so the key things in getting a successful refret are the preparation of the fingerboard um, to as smooth and level a surface as possible. Um, the best possible preparation of the frets. So that's cutting them. Uh, sorry, if you think of the fret, fingerboard and fret slots, that, you've got to get that right. So that means getting the radius right and cleaning out the existing slots to the best of your ability, ready for the next fret. And then after that, it's bending and preparing, bending, cutting and preparing your frets so that they will fit into the slots as best they can. So... Um, you got to get all of that right and then you've got to tap them in evenly all, all across the fretboard as you go um, and hopefully that you don't do it with an uneven pressure and so on and so forth um, so it's it's a lot of little bits and pieces to keep in mind keep your keep your eye on eye on um, but it's very satisfying and um, when you get it good, it, the, you know, having a nice new set of frets is a lovely feeling. It's a, 
It's a wondrous thing, I tell you. So, it, so the thing about doing a Les Paul style is you you've got the um, binding, which means you have to you have to use frets cut a certain way. That means you have to cut them with these little overhangs to allow them to press in without cutting through the binding or interfering with the binding. And then on top of that, because it's a set neck, we can't push this whole neck into the fret press, which is a kind of more controllable way of pressing frets. Um, so if you had a bolt-on neck, you can offer it up with its prepared slots. You can offer it up to the fret press and just do your frets one after another, exerting the same sort of pressure on the fret, fret as you press the new ones and come to the end and then you're ready to let your glue, if any, set. And then you can come back the next day and uh, end bevel it and do the fret end work. But with a Les Paul, because the neck is set or glued in, you can't really, you can put some of this neck through the uh, fret press. Um, it's actually quite difficult to do because you have to support the whole body, lift it up to get the neck at the right height. Um, but it's possible. But then you have to switch to a different method um, and you can either use a sort of tapping method or you can try and use a, one of those handheld clamping methods that put the pressure on the underside of the body here. Um, they're really expensive, those, those uh, clamping presses. Um, so I've never felt moved to spend the money for one of those. So when I have a Les Paul like this, I will end up tapping the frets in. If you feel nervous about doing that, you have to keep in mind that when most people make new guitars, if you watch Luthier's channels of making new guitars and they come to the neck part, very rarely do they use glue on a, on a new guitar. They will almost always um, just tap the frets and the frets will grip. Now, I will, I will try these frets out when I've made the new frets and it may well be that I get a feeling from tapping them in that tells me actually I could get away with no glue um, for example uh, because they're, they're just the, the tang width is just perfect for the slots that we've got or it may be that I feel that we can get away with a little bit of um, a little bit of wood glue just to dry over time and add that extra little bit of grip um, just for peace of mind's sake. Or I would probably tell in the first instant whether or not it feels like this needs super glue to hold it down because it just doesn't want to otherwise. And sometimes I find that I've just got to be prepared to jump between any one of those three approaches. Um, so it's critical to get that right, it's important to be aware of whether the um, new fret wire that you're, you've selected to use is in fact the same tang width as the existing stuff. If it is, and if you manage to pull the wire out, the original wire out cleanly like this, then it might well be, providing the tang widths are the same, you may well find that you're on for a, a good secure fitting tapping in without need for any glue at all and it may just you may get that confident feeling and just go for it um what you what you can afford it to be a little bit looser because you can use glue if you have to or if you if it's very loose what you can also do is to um you can add little tang with to a little extra tangs if you like to the not tangs little burrs to the fret to help it grip a little more and um, you can buy expensive tools for doing that but I tend to do it with a little pair of uh, in flush cutters um, I just have a sort of by eye technique where I can just, you just I'm just twisting and nipping the edge of the tang and it just gives it a little bit more um, gripping power into the wood it's, it, it's obviously it's holding better because it's digging in a bit further into the wood so um, but it it's one way if you've got a very loose uh, slot. So that's what I sometimes use. Um, but the ideal situation, as always, is to start with the, the um, 
the the new fret the new frets tangs being very close to the original that are coming out and that way you stand the best chance of the ideal situation would be that you tap them in and they just grip snugly without you having to do anything but reality is that it's very rare that you're going to get exactly the same uh, width tang you know when you're re-fretting a guitar that's maybe 10 15 20 years old um you know why would they have exactly the same um manufacturing for the uh for the frets well they, they probably wouldn't so changes over time are going to mean that certain things change okay so you can see right away that i've broken a couple of uh blades in the process which is fine i'll put them in my blade amnesty box we go through quite a few of them <laughs> and so now we're at a position where i would at this point want to dial the neck back um to flat because i don't want the back bow in it just now so you can use a flat edge if you like um, i'm going to do this by eye mostly and I'm going to support it there because there's gravity involved um, that, that feels pretty good to me um, but you can get a square edge I've got a notched square edge which I never use because I don't find any need to in using my methods but next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to check the old wire and get some new wire out and we'll do a comparison so I've got some all parts jumbo wire here um, which is nice chunky stuff and I'm going to do a measurement as close as I can get with a micro, micro color, uh, digital caliper and measure the thickness of this so we've got about 60 for that tang there and this one looks fractionally wider I think no 65 Get it between the burrs 65 and 60 well that's not a bad thing because having gone in already and doing some cleaning out this will probably will probably widen it a little bit in the cleaning process um so by the time we come to put this new wire in um i think it's going to be just about right which is a, a, a happy coincidence so there's the original fret wire if i can zoom out um, and we can do a msr uh i can never remember asthma amser for those people who like jingly jangly things i could sit here for hours going fret wires beautiful fret wires new fret wires old fret wires and throw it away so uh so to begin with uh, let's just have uh, a small look at what the inside of these slots feels like and it's a bit you know, i can feel a bit crunchy down here so maybe that had some glue in it that one i don't know so i use the back end of this um yeah there's definitely some crunch down there well, that's it that's a bit of a challenge when you do come across um this sort of crunchy a sense of a crunchy build-up of anything because somehow you've got to get this out um, it feels quite uneven let's just have a look all the way through yeah there's a lot of unevenness in there which seems to go up and down so whether there's been some glue in here or not um, I don't know it doesn't feel like it because it hasn't to me it doesn't seem to have produce much in the way of damage uh, but I got a feeling it might be making uh, scraping this thing a little bit more time consuming than normal um, however it could also be that the let's find the right thing here it could also be that the the crunchy stuff I'm detecting could be far enough down inside the slot to not actually bear any um any you know mean any any issues at all for the uh, for the new fret wire and that we can we can fairly easily test that out 
So there's never any harm in just getting a piece of wire, radiusing it, um, and then cutting the first bit and just trying it as is and see what it feels like. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to check the radius. Um, and there's a bit of wear on here, I can feel it. So it's ostensibly uh, let's have a look. yeah it's going to be a it's going to be a 12 but it's as always it's not exactly 12 in fact it looks flatter than 12 so that could be an interesting start point let's have a look if we are somewhere else 14 14 is quite good but it possibly I see 14 does look a bit more like it. 16 is a bit too flat. You can see, you can see a bit of fresh air under there, I think. Let's try 14 again. No, 14 flat too. Go back to 12. Oop. Sorry, worst view ever. Going back to 12. This thing. This is interesting, 14 and 16. It's not really good, I'm putting it, I'm, I'm trying to measure it on the uh, mother of pearl stuff and actually that's flat, so that's the worst place to measure it. I think this is, I think they've made these at 16. If I'm actually honest, I think these are 16 inch radius. Now that's interesting because I'll bet you quite a bit that the bridge isn't 16 inch radius. Again, very difficult to tell just by eye. But how weird is that? Maybe it is. Maybe they've got that bit right. Wouldn't surprise me with Rally, you know. That's interesting. So I think that's a 16 inch radius. I'm going to double check. Yeah, that's just it's even. Yeah, you know, it's even. 15 inch, that looks a little bit, what am I saying? Is that 15 or 16, they're so close. Oh, blind. how do you know? 16, 15, to go right to the edge on 15. 15, it's so close, how do you tell between 15 and 16? There's a little tiny bit of drop off on the edge anyway, on, in both cases. Um, it's not as flat as 20, is it? No, 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 20 is too flat, it lifts up. So it's either 15 or 16. It's definitely not 14, that's a bit too, it's flatter than four, 14 is too curved. 15 looks right. 16 somehow feels just that little bit better. So, 16, so it's not a 12 inch radius. And the question is, is, question is, is, the question is, if it's 16, do we know what the radius really is on this? And is there a really reliable way of telling? Because putting it across the top of the blocks isn't really that good because they've obviously got, um, they obviously have slots, but that looks pretty good. I wonder how badly off that looks if it's 12. Because it may be that I have to rethink. So the 12 does look much more curved than the radius on these saddle blocks. But we go across there. Yeah. That's interesting. That could be part of the secret. Mm. Now, the difference between the 12 and the 16 inch radius down here isn't such a big deal. Um, so that's the first thing to observe. Um, if the, if, the, if the bridge is slightly flatter than the, sorry, the neck is slightly flatter than the bridge, um, it, it will leave the uh, 
uh, I guess you'd say the, the inner strings, the middle strings will be slightly higher than the outer strings. Um, and the one thing is I'm just putting a load of tape down here before I do any um, radiusing type of stuff. Why doesn't this tape break when you want it to? Um, so I'm just covering up the paintwork as much as I can. And what I tend to want to do as I'm about to refret, I tend to then put some monkey, no, gorilla, monkey, gorilla tape on here so that I can really not worry about hitting the edges with any tools as I'm working so I can afford to run the um, uh, even the end beveling file for example can hit this and we won't do any damage um, so I do like to have that precaution especially when fretting you can put a bit over there so it's better to use up lots of tape than to damage and I, I put obviously the green frog tape down first so it's it's less sticky but it I can still put the gorilla tape on which is stickier but it, it's in a safe place and it can add the protection right so when we come to this we're saying 16 and we're going to end up with a 16 inch radius sorry 12 inch radius probably saddle because they tend to be standardized so what am I doing? I'm going to look for a 16-inch radius block, 7.25, 16-inch. Here it is. Now this has got some sandpaper on already, so I'm just going to start with this. Um, uh, what you can see? Oh yeah, there you can. So what I can do is, first of all, at 16, I can run this up and down, and this will give me a fairly interesting quick assessment of this radius versus the blocks radius and because one of obviously the block will impose itself ultimately onto the fingerboard um, so we're going to work to whatever my radiusing block says when all is said and done that looks pretty good that's that's it's um it's hitting most of the guitar fingerboard at the same time, especially down the end there. There is a little bit of, um, what do you call it, a little bit of flattening in places, but that's often sort of an accidental flattening that comes either with edge and play, or sometimes it comes, I don't know, maybe it's partly because it's flat when they've put these. Um, I need to, I need to do, I need to take this down really. Damn. I should have done that first. Oh, that's good. Um, I want to dial down this pickup because it's sitting in the way. Oh. I always do it in the wrong order, lad. Well, thankfully, that all managed, mostly managed to come off. I'm going to just take this down. Just get everything safely out of the way of files and such things. Um, oh, you go there. You go there like so, and you go there, like a so. That looks about good. So I've got clean run. So I'm just very gently putting pressure on just to kind of see where it's cutting and how long it will take to give us a nice clean re-radiused board. And it's actually not much at all, as you can see. There is a flat spot down here. 
that's all that's all that's getting in the way and I don't really think that's too much of a, a problem um, we can put a little bit of extra time in there uh, just to kind of level it out as a 16 inch radius So that's an interesting thing. I don't think I, I've have I I've re-radiused a, a rally before, and I've done it to uh, I've actually done it to a twelve-inch radius, and that was for Andrew, left-handed Andrew, <laughs> Andrew and Scott, um, and as a result, it matched the uh, it matched the bridge that I used. Um, in this case, it can be interesting because I always have used uh, the roller bridges, the North West Guitars roller bridges, with when I've upgraded rallies, um, and it always seemed to feel fine. But I'm going to look very carefully um, at this just to be absolutely certain. So I've nearly got rid of the scratch on the wood there, and the rest of this is looking pretty fresh and dandy so a little bit more work um but you can see it doesn't require an awful lot to get it freshened up and then we'll know that we once i've got this bit sorted out mostly we'll know that we're working with um 16 inch radius and that will give us the best possible chance of having the uh, fret bend match to the radius of the board. Okay. So this is a you know one way of making a, a fingerboard start to look very new again. Um, that's quite a deep scratch so it's taking a while to come out but it'd be worth getting it out. It's, it's somebody's blade. It looks like a fretting mistake, um, having made several like that in my own time. So whether or not somebody's actually refretted this somewhere in the past or not, is anyone's guess. But may well have done. how uh, long the scratch holds on for. Of course the radius thing that I'm doing here depends on me trusting the radius claimed for this block, which is made by somebody in Portugal, um, you know, and who knows what happens with their the machinery, where that's made, or the you know, perhaps the machinery's got tired over the years, and perhaps it's no longer exactly 16-inch radius. This is very difficult to get this scratch out. It doesn't want to go. I mean, it would be a shame to leave it in. So, feels lovely and fresh and new. I'm going to put this down here and support it like so. Let's concentrate on this bit for a minute. There, come on, clean up. <sighs> I 
nearly there, almost. Seems a shame not to go the whole hog, doesn't it? dust everywhere. Okay, so muchly freshened up, but of course we now need to bend some wire at 16 inch radius. So I'm going to show you to where I'm sort of doing it. I'm going to be over there. The bender is on the wall there. So to do this I need my the wire I'm going to use and I need the 16 inch radius guide. Maybe some light. I'm going to just put this in the bender and see what it bends to. It might be way too tight, but let's see roughly what that can, comes out as. Uh, yeah, too, too tight, so I need to flatten it out again. And I need then to slack this off a little bit. So I undo this and I go wrong way, I go this way. So clockwise to slacken. And I'll try it again. And there's almost no bend at all there. So anti-clockwise. Bring it back in a bit. Let's try again. Okay, that feels sort of close too. That is fractionally overbent for 16. Uh, so we undo, go clockwise, uh, do it up again. And this time I'll flatten it one more time. And we'll do it again, aiming for 16. <laughs> So I'll get some, a couple more pieces of this and I'll bend them straight through. Bend them, no, I won't bend them straight, I'll bend them. A couple of times each. So when I'm here, I shall check the radius of my bent material. Is that 16? Is it more or is it less? That's about right. Is this 16? That's spot on. Oh yeah, that's not bad. Okay, so there's my, my radius material. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a test cut just to see what we get uh, as a, uh, a fit. So I'm going to cut a, a frets worth, which I'm going to hope is a small amount to begin with. Just guessing it right. And what I'll do is I'll get my other cutters of trimmers, which I now have forgotten where I put them. Uh -huh. I've moved them and I've put them somewhere really smart that I don't know about. <laughs> um, you'd think they'd be there with everything else, wouldn't you? No, they're not there. You'd think they'd be 
Over here, smart. Why didn't I put them there? Uh, right, so if they're not there, so move things around. Cut nippers, come on, I've got to be here. Okay, the front nippers aren't there anymore. Where in heaven's name are they? They'd have to be somewhere magnetic, because otherwise I don't stand a chance of finding them. They're not there, they're not sitting there, they're not in the containers there. Um, back nippers, come on, what are you looking for? Oh yeah, rubber handle thing. I'm gonna have to stop the camera and go looking for these. I keep losing odd things like that. Right, I'm gonna have to stop the camera. I will, can't do this until I find them. And I evidently haven't stuck them somewhere that I thought I would have done somewhere sensible. Uh, either that or I just have and I can't see them. So it was something I, I lost the other day. No, I found it, the, the reamer. Right, I'm going to stop and go and find these things because I've confused myself. Okay, I found them. They weren't quite as silly a place as I imagined. But right, so just to do this initial test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, um, I'm going to clean out the first fret of dust from the re radiusing of the board. And I feel a big sort of bump in there. And I don't know what that is, whether it's old glue or some, whoops, some material. But the problem is I don't have an awful lot of grip to attack this. And certainly not without... Um, running into and damaging the binding so i'm sort of going to i was thinking that the way to do it would be to assume that this uh blockage if you like is below the level of anything important because otherwise we couldn't have had a nice fretting before if, if it was an obstruction but i don't like the thought of there being something in there that doesn't want to um clean out um but the question is, is how much, how far below the surface is it? And you know, I can sort of do a little test and and see if it's actually getting in the way. Or I can try and sort of work on it like this with a blade and try and chop some of this stuff out. But again, you can see I'm I'm having to I'm having to work quite hard. It's probably better to spend the time doing exactly this and now you can see that whatever it was that was built up in there has now cleared to my satisfaction so I will take the time with all of them now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the use my tang cutter to undercut one of these frets uh, badly so I messed that cut up completely so I'll trim this one to tidy it up so I'm just going to slightly lengthen this. I am failing to cut cleanly. Thank you. I've got enough here. Still got enough to do. Good. Um, right. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting the right, I'm making the right length fret with some tang overhang, baby. And the first thing I'm doing right now is I'm feeling, how does it sit? Does it want to go in at all? Well, it doesn't, but that could be because there's a little bit of and tang twist on the end here. So I just twist that back out. And somewhere I have my file, which I'm going to use to just tidy up. Make sure there's no sticking up parts here. Probably better to use a, a block to put this on to do it. But I, I would want to tidy up a little bit. block with some bits already cut in it that helped me to tidy up. So where I, where I know I've got some sticking up uh, tang re residue, I can use this file and that block just to clear that up. Um, there we go. And then I can just 
file down and clear up this bit of sharp overhang. So I want as, as neat and tidy an end as possible. And then I can line this up with the edge of the board there. All right, let's call it exactly the right length, hey? For the, for the purposes of this test. And then I will trim this end here neatly. But again, I've got a bit of tang twist, baby. So I'm gonna tidy that up. Or bend it back, I should say. Um, just realized I've got to go and book a courier. And I'll tidy this bit up under here. Like so. Right, so now I've got my over overhanging tangs and I can put this in place, line it on the oops, line it on the slot and see how it feels. Now straight away it doesn't feel like it wants to go all the way in, but it doesn't feel bad. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a 16 inch radius uh, brass insert if I can find the 16 inch one, 12, 9, 9.5, 7.25. Guess what? It's the one that's in there. So the last thing I did was 16 inch radius. Come on, I'm good. Right. Look at that. 16 inch radius. Right. So then I'll get my fretting hammer. And you can see that sometimes people don't use a call a, a, a insert like this. They just tap them, they just go across the thing, bang it in, and they're happy. But I might start with this and I might put the radius on here and go bang, bang, bang. I go, do you know what? That's gone in fairly well. Have a quick look at it. I would say there's no problem with that at all. Um, if we were to observe this from the end. So that's just quickly tapped in. Oops. Um, now, what I might see is there's a tiny lift here on the, uh, the bit that we've overhung. That's the only thing, but that's probably because it's got a bit of roll off. Um, it also might be that the first bit of the fret is, uh, and, and the wire is never very well evenly curved, so I tend to cut off the first bit. Um, but anyway, that was that was that. So that I think that went in pretty well. Now I'm going to pull it out with my uh, age-old pulling method and just get a feel. That came out quite neatly. So I think that. Uh, plus, I think this type of fret wire, plus um, this tang, plus a little bit of wood glue would be perfect for me. And wood glue is great because you can clean up easily. So I think the bit I've got to spend time on right now is cleaning out the slots. Um, so I'm really happy that they're right up to the ends clean. And I've got these lumpy bits. So I guess I'll just take the obvious stuff out of the way first. Now the fact that there is some what looks like kind of what feels like hardened glue in there but came out as something that looked like solid version of this rosewoody dust could mean that it's it's a combination of dust and glue that's hardened from a previous fretting or the original fretting. I don't know what they used in the factory but I think I'm going to need to put the effort in to clean out all of these slots adequately um, so that not one of them has any sense of this gritty stuff on the bottom that I'm feeling currently. So I think that's going to take some time um, and I think for the sake of my sanity and yours I think it probably makes sense that I'll do that off camera so I can put the radio on for a bit zone out and do this sort of manual work you saw me cleaning clearing the first fret out um, and you saw that it required going beyond the sort of point where you'd think it was possible to clean it out because it felt like there was something rock solid in there but I sort of used the blade like and like I used the blade and, and persevered, sort of 
chopping into whatever solid material needed to come out. And then eventually that turned into a freer running slot. Um, quite, quite difficult to use tools like this because they're obviously blades and they're not really made for this. But I'm going to work my way carefully through all of these. I'll see you back when that's done. Oh, we are running late today. So here we go with the fret process. So I've cleaned the slots out, cut the frets, and now I'm going to uh, get some uh, get some glue into the slots like so. Okay, so it is literally a matter of glooping it in. All right, so I'll just do one first. I'll show you and get my prepared fret and I'm going to line it up exactly in position where I want it. I'm going to remarkably miraculously find my 16 inch thingy. <laughs> and I'm going to whack it on like that. And then I'm going to wipe a bit off like this. And then I'm going to check the other side of it, which looks maybe, see if it's sticking up or not. And have a look. Uh, yeah, that's what's interesting. So this is it's got a bit of bounce to it, so it may be not so good that, that it's got this bounce. Um, but we shall see. Okay. Um, what I have got is a wet cloth over here, so when I want to make sure I got rid of the glue, I can just rub that bit there and clean it up. So um, now I sometimes I use a wooden block instead of that. So I've got what's this one? 14 inch radius block here. So if I'm not sure I've reached the end, I can give it a, a clout with these blocks which has sort of more direct force than seems better sometimes than using the brass things. Okay, so now I can go on with the next bit of glue. I don't know how well the view is, but I'm just kind of getting it into the hole. Don't mind that it's overloaded a bit. And then we can line up this like so. And tap this down. That's interesting, that one seems to be sitting up, which is odd. I'll we'll get it down. <laughs> so it's taking a bit more of a whack. Losing out some glue too. So. Mm -hmm. and once again, a bit of cleaning up and so on. And so the plan is to keep going along this row here um, and then eventually we'll end up putting the guitar body flat on the deck and then using doing the higher frets with the, the body itself taking the blow. So, so I'm just going to want to line these up as good as possible. Um, I don't know whether I like that as a, a device, but I kind of prefer the softer touch of the wood, actually. Normally when I'm doing this, I have a whole load of pre-torn up bits of paper ready to go and I've not managed that this time. So just giving everything a, an extra whack. Um, just to be sure. OK, 
looking okay. And then what I'll do is two more and then I'll have a look at the sort of balance of them all just to make sure they're all going in the right direction. I had to work quite hard to clear these slots out. Um, as you saw originally. Um, so I'm here late because of the village. Obviously, it's actually the Ju it wasn't parish council stuff actually, it was Jubilee committee stuff that I was doing. So I kind of running late. Okay, so I move that along one, get my wooden block. Radius on the wooden block doesn't whoops, doesn't have to be strictly the same. Yeah, the, the radius of the block can be, as long as it's shortish block, it can be anything really. It's just a blow, a, you know, point of striking point. One of the things that I think I'm, I was going to mention is that if you, if you end up with the, um, get in, get in, get in, if you end up with the, uh, tang being too wide what you can end up doing if you don't widen the slots you can end up pushing the neck into a sort of back bowed position which you obviously don't want to do now this one here isn't sitting down at that end so I think it has partly to do with the fact that I'm, I'm hitting onto a bouncy substance which I can really do without but let's just go back to this one a minute thank you see the difference <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so we've got those seated nicely make sure the other end is good too one two So I'm just going to quickly look down here and they look actually pretty good. Yep. So I shall carry on. Um, probably line up three at a time now. Get this all done. Hmm. And then once it's done, I'll leave it till tomorrow. Um, and then I will end bevel, which is cut cut the frets back to a uh, so, sort of 30 degree angle, nice and flush with the edge. So I won't line them up first. I will hammer each one in first before I put the next one in. close to the edge that's pushing right down into the edge so I could have maybe done with a bit more undercut but let's see if we can do it so I should have said caution loud noise So noisy. These are oak blocks and they're basically just bashing them to bits really. Right. Clean up, clean up. I might get another more rigid one that isn't falling to bits. 
14 inches as well. It's good enough. So I'll just give these a, a whack. good sorry it's a bit noisy I tend to be a bit brutal with my fretting absolutely determined to make sure it all sits in place Don't want anything sticking out that's the that's the most depressing bit when you end up with if you end up with an end sticking up because you didn't clout it hard enough it's a real pain Okay, so as we get further down here, we end up having to, we run out of places we can support the uh, frets. So and I mean, end up having to put the neck, uh, the body on the ground. Lucky now. Then one more and then clean up. Sorry about the view. I'm not uh, doing very well as camera work. Clean up and then quickly run back down and make sure they're all seated properly. So starting there. Stand by for noise. There we go. almost out of reach now I have to I think we're good good to put the guitar now flat on the bench to do this now the thing I've found in the past with fretting is you have to be brutally honest with yourself so at this point if you hold it up and you see a fret sticking up or two frets or more sticking up if something isn't going right you've got to stop um, you can't just keep plowing on. It isn't worth it. That's okay. Let's check that one there. Uh, yeah, if, if something's sticking up and it's not seating, it's not worth it. Um, so just yeah, don't don't hope for it and leave it be. Um, go back and take pull out pull out the ones that aren't working. Get some work. Is that going to be good enough for a whack? A whack under there. Don't want to. These these haven't got that much 
what's the word? They haven't got that much rubber on them and I've made a mistake in the past of hitting something too hard with one of those bench dogs behind it and uh, ended up giving myself a dent to deal with, which is not fun. So if we get these four clear and then we should be on the home run, home run, home stretch. And then I have to go and sort out the courier. But I think now at this rate, I'm gonna to have to book that tomorrow and drop it at the post office. Um, now this is almost exactly the right length. A smidgen more or less. should be over the solid bit. Yep. As soon as you get to the solid bit, it seems to be much easier to do. Of course, the fretting like this doesn't like the bounce of rubber foam. Um, believe it or not, it much prefers a solid hit. You can hit them like that too. Also cut. I'm sort of playing a fighting a losing battle. No, I'm, I'm trying to keep the overhangs as short as possible because what I don't want um, is uh, I don't want the ends of frets to turn up. If sometimes if you over overhang too much, there's a risk that the fret end can lift, uh, and you don't want that. So it's a matter of how do you keep the the overhang part, or the tangless part, I should say, as short as possible to avoid that happening. And it's not easy to do. It's, sometimes if you keep it very short, then it's it's not clear of the corner of the slot, the corners. Really, I'm just taking it more care of the, the front ends on these than those passes. Pretty happy that the rest of the fret is sitting down. Just want to make sure the ends are good. All right, a quick look down again. Yep, that's good. And then, I don't, I don't really mentioned this I don't think but in reality I was talking to um, Alex about it yesterday but I hadn't said on this video in reality you, you might be really amazed how rarely uh, a single fretting will hit the mark and you know it's almost impossible to press in a, or hammer in a load of frets like this and not have to do any fret leveling it's I maybe I think if I'm conservative, I might get one in 30 refrets where I could, I'm fairly confident I could just go and play and wouldn't need to do anything else to it. But it's it's more by luck than any other thing. So it's really, really rare. So if you ever do get into fretting, don't feel bad if your experience of fretting is that you don't end up with frets that are immediately playable because it's incredibly rare to do that, to end up with that. Um, and when you do get nearly there, and then it's a real buzz, you know, it feels great, but it is rare. It's a bit of a mess, this corner. I've put on a lot of glue, but again, it doesn't really matter. So, as long as we don't start to clean it up with. That's what's good about the wood glue. It does add, helps you give an extra little bit of grip, 
but does so without the um, you know, clogging everything up. Foolishly, I rather foolishly have forgotten to do something that I usually do, and that is I usually tailor the fret length uh, at this end, <laughs> and I haven't done it, so I'm going to find myself filing into inaccessible places later on when it comes to end beveling time, which I should have thought about it. The other way to do it is to hand file frets that live down this end so you don't have to end bevel them um, and it just means they're hand, they're hand done and they don't ever quite look as tightly trimmed as anything else because they're not they're they're done by hand and you're guessing or you're approximating the correct length when you end bevel them with a the block the beauty of that device is that it um it gives you a really sharp equal cut on all the frets so they they line up very accurately uh, the problem is getting the block up to here to do it is very difficult so I probably just made my own life more difficult probably end up having to do this by hand one way or another but even if I'm using possibly even a little little um, sanding mandrel or something like that now technically I could waste all of these pull them all up and hand bevel all of the ends of them but well let me just have a quick look and see whether I actually can fit the end beveling file on with care. So as long as I can do it with care, then I should be all right. So I'm just going to check whether I can get there when all's said and done. Yeah, probably just as long as I'm careful. Very careful. Yep. I mean, you can try and file it by hand, but that doesn't really work all that well. Okay, so a quick look into the light. Look into the light. Ah, all looks pretty good to me, actually. Yeah. There we have it. Refretted. Done for tonight. We'll put this in this little thing. I'll let the clear up tomorrow because we are running so late. Um, tip this down the sink. So now I'll put it in here to wash up tomorrow. Right, good. Well, that's it for now. That's all I'm going to do. Um, come back tomorrow and do the end fret end work. But that's a good chunk of the refret part of things taken care of. Jolly good. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.